Hey guys and welcome back. We're going to go ahead and cover a few more questions off of the arithmetic reasoning portion of the ASVAB. So let's go ahead and dive right in and let's see what we can learn. Look, I'm not going to try to beat around the bush here. This is a quick question. You shouldn't spend more than a few seconds on it. You use a $20 bill to buy a magazine for $3.95. What change do you get back? I don't know if they're just trying to work on simple subtraction here or what, but we're just doing 20 minus that $3.95. Well, that's five cents off of $4. So 20 minus $4 would give me 16 back. But remember, it was not $4, $3.95, so that means we still have that extra 5 cents, 0 .05, that would be added back to there. So we're looking at a final answer here of A, 16.05. Number 12 on the ESVAB is a ratio question. It says here, standing by a pole, a boy three and a half feet tall casts a six foot shadow. The pole casts a 24 foot shadow. How tall is the pole? So we got a boy, Casting a shadow, there's your triangle, um, three and a half for him, uh, and he has a six foot shadow. Then you got this giant pole, 24 foot, all right? Now, here's the deal, because the sun's coming in and whatnot at the same and all the jazz. They're assuming that these are similar triangles, meaning that the ratios will stay the same. So whatever the ratio from six to 24 is should be the ratio of this three and a half to whatever this is down here. Well, if I do six times four, that's what's going to give me this 24. So to get this answer, I need to do three and a half times four. Well, three times four is 12. A half times four is two, so 12 plus that two is going to give me a final answer of 14 feet. So we're looking at answer A. Some basic math skills here. It says Ray earns eight forty an hour plus an over rate, overtime rate equal to one and a half times her regular pay for each hour worked beyond 40 hours. What are her total earnings for the 45 hour work week? So we got the first two things here. 40 hours at eight forty an hour. All right. Then we have another five hours where she's making time and a half. Now, what is time and a half? You take this plus half of this back to it because you make more money once you go over the 40 hours. So what would be this plus half of this? Well, half of it right off the bat would be 420 because cut eight and a half, you get four, cut four and a half, you get two. So what would this new rate be for the overtime? Well, 40 cents plus 20 cents gives me 60 cents. And 8 plus 4 is going to give me 12. So we have two things here, and we're going to add them together. So let's just go ahead and go through this. All right, we got our 0 times 0 is 0 um, for that whole thing. Then we have another carry down the 0. We got 4 times 0 is going to give us another 0. We have 4 times 4, which is 16. Carry the 1. And we have 4 times 8, which is 32. 32 plus that 1 would make 33. So... Remove the decimal over twice for right here, giving us 336 for the normal 40 hours. Now, for this down here, 5 times 6 is going to give me 30. Carry the 3. 5 times the 2 is going... Oh, I also forgot to do the original 0 there. 5 times the 2 is 10, plus that is going to give me 13. Carry the 1. 5 times 1 is 5, plus 1 is going to give me 6. Move our decimal over twice for the 60 cents right here. Meaning that here's our two numbers. $336 for the original 40 hours and $63 for the overtime. When I add these two together, 6 and 3 is 9, 6 and 3 is 9, and we have 3. So in total, there are making $3.99. That's going to be answer C. Number 14 is one of those ones that's just easier to handle in your head, but you know, here we are. We're going to explain it anyway. It says a sweater originally priced at $40 is on sale for $30. What percent has the sweater been discounted? So in order for us to find out what percent it has been discounted, we need to consider how much was taken off of the original price. Well, how much was that? It went from 40 down to 30, meaning the actual discount was $10 off. Now that's $10 out of the original $40, all right? If we reduce this fraction, we can see that 10 divided by 40 is going to reduce down to 1 over 4. So that means that we're essentially taking away one-fourth of the original price. Well, if I think of this out of 100, one-fourth is the same thing as 0.25 or 25%. So what does that mean? It means that this was discounted for 25% off the original price, which is what brought us to this $30. So our answer here is A. 
number 15 is just getting everyone on here. It says a cardboard box has a length of three feet, height of two and a half feet, and a depth of two feet. If the length and depth are doubled, by what percent does the volume of the box change? So here's the deal. You got this box, all right? We know that area, or sorry, volume of this box is just going to be multiplying those together. So three um, times two times two and a half. All right. Now, if I do that out, the three times two is going to give me six times two is 12 and another half would be adding a three back to that. So this is going to be 15. A lot of people would look at this and say, OK, I double the length. That means we're increasing to 200 percent the original. And then we double the depth, so that's another 200%, so we're at 400%. But in reality, it's not that. It's not 400%. Instead, you are essentially adding 100% with the doubling of the length, and then you're adding another 100% with the doubling of the depth. So you're doing that 100% twice, not doubling the new one, which means our actual answer should be 300. Let's double check this. If I do double the length, the length was three, so it now becomes them six and we're doubling the depth so instead of two we're now looking at four and we start multiplying by that two and a half all right so six times four is going to be 24 times two would put us at 48 all right and half of that 24 would be adding another 12 so that's going to put us at a total of 60 now 60 is 45 more than the 15. So again, you can see we increased it by three times this original amount, like as in 45 would be three times 15. So again, that's a 300% increase. Our answer here is definitely B. Merry Christmas. Let's knock out an easy one. Number 16 says, Mr. Triber is, earns a weekly salary of $300 plus 10% on commission of all sales. If he sold 8,350 last week, dollars worth, what were his total earnings? Well, first off, we got that 300, right? Then we got to take 10% of this guy. Now, 10% is one of those easy ones because anytime you're multiplying by a multiple of 10, it just means you're moving your decimal place. Now, remember, 10% is really 0.10 when written as a decimal. So when we're multiplying this out, you're actually not going to be moving it to the right one. You're going to move it to the left one. So 10% of 8,350 is just going to be 835. So now we have these two numbers, how much he's making per his weekly salary, and then his commission that he's going to be adding on to this. So if I do 835 plus that 300, that's going to give me 11. 35. So our final answer here is C. Number 17 on the ASVAB says, Jamie collects 300 stamps one week, 420 stamps the next week, and 180 stamps the last week. He can trade the stamps for collector coins. If 25 stamps earn him one coin, how many coins can Jamie collect? So our first thing here is to figure out the total number of stamps, and then essentially find out how many coins we can collect with these stamps. So first off, let's add these up and get this. Remember, there's no calculator here, but this mental math should be pretty easy let's calculate the hundreds first we have 400 plus 300 would make 700 plus another 100 would make 800 we also have the 20 and 80 which give us another even 100 meaning that we got a total of 900 stamps here now we have 25 stamps get you one coin so essentially that means we're dividing this guy by 25 now you could say like oh how do you do this without a calculator in my mind i would say hey 25 times four is 100. So that means for every 100, we'd be able to get four coins, all right? Well, we have 900 stamps. So if for every 100, we're getting four coins, and we have nine 100s, I'm just going to do nine times four to give me 36. That means we're able to get a total of 36 coins, which is option A. Man, oh man, 18 is an easy one. Let's take a look here. This is the ASVAB mathematical knowledge portion of the test. It says, on a map, one centimeter represents four miles. A distance of 10 miles would be how far apart on the map. So this is essentially just figuring out like a ratios game. Now, you could do it directly doing all the mathematical things, but let's just use some logical reasoning here, okay? So one centimeter represents four miles. So that means that two centimeters would represent eight miles. How? Because, well, one times two gives us the two, and four times two gives us the eight. So right off the bat, I know that it's going to be more than two, because ten's more than eight, 
All right. So it's going to be more than two. Well, what if we did three centimeters? Well, one times three gives us three. Four times three gives us 12 miles. So looking at this, we have to be somewhere between two and three because I'm going from eight to 12. And in fact, we're exactly in the middle of eight and 12 with this 10, which means that our answer is probably going to be two and a half. Is that one of our options? It is indeed C. Now, most of this should be able to be done in your head in a matter of seconds, just looking like, hey, double the four would give me eight. Um, but if I do three times, it gives me 12. That's too much. And you just do that little quick game in your head and get an answer of C. I'm explaining it out so you can see it, but this should all be very, very quick math. Number 19 on the SVEB says David donates four thirteenths of his paycheck to his favorite charity. If he donates $26.80, what is the amount of his paycheck? So the way that you would do this is you would take the total amount. All right, we'll just say T for total. All right, then we, you would multiply that by 4 over 13, and that would tell you the 26 80 that we'd be looking at but in this case we have this as the answer so we actually have to divide this by the fraction to get t by itself to find out the total amount he's making well dividing by a fraction is just multiplying by the reciprocal what does that mean it means you take that number and you flip it upside down that's the reciprocal and then you can multiply it by the guy over here and that will give us our final answer the problem is this is not pretty to do without a calculator so i guess we'll go ahead and start off by dividing this whole thing by four Four, um, and then we'll multiply by the 13. So dividing by 4, um, let's see, 4 goes into 26, because it doesn't go into the 2. It goes into 26, uh, let's see, 24 times 6, so 6 times, being 24, holding 2 to carry over. And then it goes into 4 goes into 28, 7 times even, so that's going to be 670. Now we have 670 by dividing this guy by 4, and we need to multiply that by that 13. So multiply that by 13. All right, well, 3 times 0 is 0, 3 times 7. You know what? Let's just, oh, well, no, we're going to need to do exact. 3 times 7 is 21. 3 times 6 is going to give me 18, plus 2 is 20. Then we have the 0 from there. Then we have that 0. We have a 7, and we have a 6. Adding these up, we got 1, 7... Eight. It looks like our total is going to be 8710, which is going to be answer C. Sometimes you just got to common sense this stuff. We got number 20. Rachel ran half a mile in four minutes. At this rate, how many miles can she run in 15 minutes? So first off, half a mile in four minutes. Well, if I'm going half a mile in four minutes, then if I double that, that will take me to a full mile. All right, so if I take a half plus another half, that will give me one full mile, all right? But we have four, all right, we have four minutes, so if we're going to double that in the same way, so half plus a half is going to give me four, so, or sorry, will give me the one mile, so four plus the four will give me eight minutes. So that means in eight minutes, you are going one mile, all right? They want to know how many in 15 minutes. Well, I hate to tell you, but like if I double eight, that's just going to give me 16 minutes, and that's only going to be for two miles, all right? Well, look at my answers here. In 16 minutes, I'm hitting two, so that means in 15 minutes, I'm not going to be at two yet, so I need to choose one that's under two. There's only one answer here, so we're going to go with A, all right? Sometimes you just got to look at it, kind of reason through it. This should all be a quick process in your head to make it all go smooth. Hey guys, that's all we're going to cover for today, but remember, you can always click on any of these videos over here to help you keep studying for your next attempt on the ASVAB.